What's up, everyone, and welcome to NWSL Live. I am Lori Lindsay, and I will be your host slash analyst slash second analyst today. As you can see, I do not have my friends with me. Jordan Angeli is, well, actually, we decided she shouldn't join today because she's on probation from her terrible Wi-Fi that keeps um popping in and out. Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, she is calling one of the games coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then unfortunately, our other counterpart, Jeff Kasuf, is out sick, not with COVID, but just not feeling well. So you're stuck with me and we have a fun and exciting show ahead with some awesome guests that I'm really excited to introduce in a second. But it's good to welcome everybody in because obviously we didn't have games this weekend. We have some coming up tonight and then two tomorrow as well. But we did have some exciting games this past weekend leading up this weekend. The first one was Gotham FC versus North Carolina and Gotham continuing with their rebrand both on and off the field with an exciting 4-3 win. Evan Bien gets the game winner in the 90th minute. It would start off by Midge Purse. Big time goal for her. Two goals on the evening and just unfortunately making this defense for North Carolina look a little suspect in something that I'm sure Paul Riley and his staff will look to be cleaning up tonight um, as they take on Racing Louisville. And then Evelyn Vienne getting her first game coming into this 2021 season, scoring the game winner in the 91st minute. And again, it's Gotham FC with a huge win over North Carolina, something they haven't seen in years. And for the first time, we're starting to see Gotham with a lot more variety in the attack. And then it would be the Portland Thorns and the OL Rain. Well, before we get to that, we're still rolling some good footage. There's Evelyn Vian's final in the 90th minute. And exciting times for this team. And then on the West Division, it would be Portland solidifying the West for their championship game, they would take on the OL Reign. OL Reign just playing in their second game. All the internationals back. A lot of fun in this game. We're seeing Lindsey Horan scoring the free kick. Crystal Dunn getting her start as well. And it'd be Portland just starting off where they left off last season. They won the Shield in the fall. And then already, again, solidifying their position. And OL Reign, Fishlock, Megan Rapino making their their – debuts for this team so again exciting times we're starting to see all these international players back and will be lots of fun going forward into to tonight's and tomorrow night's games which again we'll preview in another segment coming up however in the meantime my most exciting part of this segment is the guests that we have on and we have two longtime members of the soccer community O.L. Rain, teammates, Allie Riley and Tony Presley, welcome you in. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming in and joining us. Hello. How are you? I'm like Orlando loving. Pride, you mean, not O.L. Rain. <laughs> what would you say? Orlando Pride. Oh, my goodness. I'm saying O.L. <laughs> so much. I'm so sorry. You all, I, I'm so sorry. We Orlando know Pride. Know. Look, Tony's like, get me off the show. I can't even be on it anymore. <laughs> and I was just going to go in and say this feels like, even though you're in Orlando, because I actually know where you are, I was going to say this feels very Miami Vice with what's happening in the background for uh, both of you. So, anyway. <laughs> very <laughs> Welcome tropical. in. I, I, please forgive me, and it's okay if you don't, because I understand that's a huge mistake but good to see you both of you thank you thank you so we're gonna chat a ton about off-season stuff but before we get in there let's let's dive into a little bit of some on-field um excitement and this is to both of you but i'll direct it to you first Allie. you know 10 years 11 years actually 2010 since you've played in the u.s can you give us a little bit of um what that life's looked like for you since then, how you've seen um, now being back with the Pride, what the game looks like in the U.S. and how it's grown? 
Yeah, so obviously that was back in the WPS days, which you remember. And <laughs> I, I mean, I love that league. It was so exciting. And that's why it's so cool to be back here and have that same just excitement around this sport in this country, to see the national team players from all different countries doing so well, to see the fans, the excitement. And that's just grown, probably like quadrupled since back then. And even then it was already so hyped. So I think being in Europe for, you know, I was in Sweden for eight years. I was in England. I was in Germany. Um, and coming back, it's, it's kind of funny because I was like, it's the time is finally right to come back. I'm seeing what's going on. The league feels very stable. I was obviously a bit, a bit scarred from, from FC Gold Pride folding, from the WPS folding. And then coming back, like this is the right time to come to Orlando Pride. And then the pandemic came and, you know, I was actually on – on this show um, right before we were gonna go into the tournament last year. And then I never even got to play for the team. <laughs> I went on loan back to Sweden and that was that was a great opportunity for me to be back, which is, you know, my second home where my partner is and to play at, you know, a high level in Europe. Um, but I was just so excited thinking about coming back to this league the whole time. And it, it has not disappointed. It is wild here. The fans <laughs> are wild. It's just, I mean, the. The, the refs have been wild. It's just in this tournament, I think it's cool that we've had this preseason tournament to just like get into it. Obviously, there is like a trophy on the line. It is important. But and I know there's kind of conflicting opinions about seeing this as a preseason tournament versus seeing it as, you know, an important part of the season. And, and I understand both sides of it. But I think to get these early games when we were missing national team players for the first two games for some of us, I think it's definitely appropriate and cool to have this tournament, get these little previews and have res unexpected results before we get into a long and really entertaining season. So I am so happy to be here and obviously to have a teammate like Tony, we've got lots of stuff going on off the field as well. But uh, no, it is, it's, it's even, even better than I had hoped and just the <laughs> entertainment value of here is like, off the charts <laughs> totally i mean listen we're here for the dramatics right and so oh, yeah. and we were laughing off air about the fact that um you know obviously given the situation it wasn't funny you have it because of the pandemic but yes having you on indivisel at home and then talking and getting you so excited and then you're like oh, yeah. nope see you later i'm going back yeah. but you're i should have started <laughs> yeah exactly and i should have st started with congratulations your first win um, both of you in over what 600 days after having this <laughs> yeah I mean we just want to put that in there for the dramatics too right so um, but yeah well it's great to, we're excited to have you back in this league and the um, enjoyment that you bring on the field and off the field is like second to none so, um, and then Tony obviously you and I teammates with the Washington Spirit back in 2013 you've been here since really the middle of that season but since the opening days how have you seen it grow how have you felt like you've developed as a player your your game has has changed over the years wow <laughs> really was, taking it, it back there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really taking it back yeah I've been here since the start of the league. Um, I think what's been really cool to see is just how, um, you know, the quality of fields have changed. The quality of change rooms have changed. I think, um, you know, we're slowly getting, you know, higher pay as well. So I think just um, from where we started to where we are now, I think that's really cool to see how, like, owners and teams and clubs have stepped up for us and, and really um, demanded that quality and, and what we deserve in facilities and such. Um, and yeah, I think um, a lot of things have changed for me over the course of just being in the league. Um, my roles have changed in different teams over the league. Um, so I think just uh, learning how to manage that and, and, and being a good teammate. And I think that's something... Um, I really try hard to do and you know we never really can control um how many minutes we can get but you know just trying to be the best I can um regardless yeah for sure and I think that's always one of the toughest parts especially the ebbs and flows right you mm -hmm. talk about um how much the game has grown on the women's side and um the work that 
all the players and people off the field have helped put in and the effort that's put in. And then with the on-field product and it doesn't change like how much of the competitors we all are and what we want out of the game ourselves. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, for sure. It's been personally being a good friend and like, I obviously haven't seen you in some years and I've retired, but it's fun to see your journey for sure. Thanks. Um, one other on-field question for me, given that this is, um, you know, a bit of a wild year and, Al, you spoke about players, international players being out for the first couple of weeks of this tournament. What's that like for all of you? You'll go to the Olympics with New Zealand. Um, Tony, you'll be with the Pride. So how? what's that like having players come in and out and managing that? I think that would be something that the viewers would be interested in because there's so much change in the rosters, who's playing, who's not, and how everyone kind of fits that in to the way you want to play on the field. Yeah, I think, oh, sorry. I'll no, go. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, it's, it's nothing new. I think we're, we're certainly used to that, people coming in and out of the team and, um, and just people being expected to step up in place of, of players. And I think um, everyone's put in a lot of hard work to be able to do that and when they're finally called upon. And um, I think, you know, we have a really good group this year and everyone's on the same page and, um, I don't think we'll have any issues once, you know, players are going to be called upon. Yeah. Do you feel that that is being like a veteran player? Um, do you feel like that is a r- important role for you? Because I think for the Orlando pride, traditionally you've had a lot of veteran players, right. And then some mm-hmm. young players. And it's really been about kind of meshing those two generations in a way. Do you feel like that is um, an important role for you, uh, Tony on the field, especially as the Olympics start to come? I think so. I think uh, just the experience that I have in this league and elsewhere um, will hopefully help these young players when they're called upon. Um, And then I think, you know, their experiences are going to help too, you know. Um, I wouldn't say, um, you know, just being in the league as long as I have is is a better experience than someone else's. But I think just the combination of, you know, being here for as long as I have and then um, some younger, fresher views, I think it's going to be a really cool mix. Yeah, awesome. I love that. She's she's being very humble. I think she (laughs) is a very key member of the team. She's also a player rep for the Players Union, which is relatively new. And to to have women like Tony fighting for which pretty much is, of course, the CBA. We want it to go into effect as as soon as possible. But this is changing the league for the generations to come. So I think to have women like Tony and Erin as our two reps in the team is so crucial. And I also think Tony's experience, she knows the styles of the team. She knows the players. So, I mean, that's for me, too. This is all new for me. So to have her expertise when we're training and just knowing the kind of runners, the kind of pressure I'm going to be facing, it is so, so valuable. And I think, again, even if we have this age gap, Tony and we have players and personalities who are so inclusive and just have such a good vibe. I mean, look at her. She's just vibing over there with, with, yeah. her, with Zoe, too, was vibing You want to see Toby? Toby? Yeah, that's what I was like. Yeah, see, oh, exactly. See, so this that, is, yeah. We love animals on this show. This is perfect. So That's the energy we need. And, yeah. and he's going to play a huge role on the field this season. Well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure I of it. fully expect him to be in a uh, pride jersey on the sidelines. Yeah, Toby. Yeah, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need to see that. Um, no, I love hearing that. And that makes so much sense because we need those voices behind the scenes that understand where – not even just this league, but leagues before have been and where they can go. And then also you're exactly right, Tony, about understanding these younger generations and like blending those voices because it is about carrying that on and allowing them to be able to speak up and, and learn quickly as well. So I love that. Uh, okay. So enough of some on-field stuff. You do have a lot of fun stuff going on off the field as well and this like this partnership this friendship i am like into right now big time (laughs) um so let's talk about it we you have uh girls gone veg and how about you al let's start with you just like tell us what this is tell us what's going on how this started and then we'll just go with it okay yeah you're catching us at like the very few hours that we aren't together which is bizarre (laughs) But um, Tony and I, when we met last year, 
just everyone was saying, oh my gosh, you guys are going to get along so well because Tony cooks and they know I cook and I had this Instagram. And so we started like sharing ideas about recipes, but we couldn't spend any time together because of COVID. So we'd like drive to each other's houses or my apartment and like leave little tinfoil packages and like little plastic containers of food and cake and like any treats we had made <laughs> and leave them for each other. And then we'd send selfies of us like, get, <laughs> like just stuffing our face with like what the other person had made. And so when we eventually could cook together, we just thought like, we've got to make a cookbook. There's so few current athletes like in this space doing a cookbook and and we want it's a Tony's a vegan and I'm I'm a flexitarian you know on my way to vegan I can see it like in the distant future um and we've just like put our styles together and our recipes we've hundreds of recipes and we're working on this cookbook and then Tony you can elaborate maybe on then on the show yeah so I mean right away you know we just hit it off like just felt the connection and the vibes right away. And like she mentioned, we wanted um, to, to do a cookbook. Um, and then um, an ex-NFL player reached out to me um, just in like regards to some business ideas. And then I mentioned to him that um, what, you know, Ali and I are doing off the field in terms of cooking. And he was like, oh, like, it would be cool if you guys could do a show and like on my platform. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so I just like mentioned it to Allie and like it was a no brainer and we've filmed eight episodes so far and it's supposed to come out in the beginning of May and we're so stoked about it and hopefully we can do another season of it. And um, yeah, it's been really, really exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. And when is this cookbook coming out? That's a good question. Yes, that's in the works. We we have a literary, literary agent. We're working on our recipes, and we want to pitch it. We want to try to get a publisher on board as soon as possible to help with some of the funding and, and just give us some direction. But we have the recipes. We're trying to, like, drip feed it because we don't want to give all our secrets away. But, of course, we're trying to cook, um, you know, as much as we can and bring food in for our teammates. And we got Mar on the barbecue and just get everyone kind of – get the brand going. We, we've got our Instagram up and running. So hopefully, I mean, the show is going to be a big promotion for the cookbook too. So once we get people, people loving us and loving our food, then hopefully it'll be easier to sell that cookbook. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, because you're a little, exactly. And your little um, glimpses behind the scene look awesome. I'm like, this looks like fabulous. And whatever the lemon bunt cakes are, I think, oh that you had put down, I was like, uh, I need to get to Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a cookbook. Don't worry. We'll okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Tony, talk a little bit about, cause you are vegan. You, um, you know, are constantly promoting that, um, on, on your social media. Can you walk us through kind of like that journey for you and, um, how that came about? Yeah, totally. Um, so been vegan since like 2016. Um, and I was just initially curious about the diet and lifestyle. And at the time I was kind of like, just making um, a lot of vegetarian meals for myself at home. And I was just like, well, it doesn't really seem that different, I think, than vegetarianism. So why not just like dive right in? Um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. And I just like had a little, gave myself a little challenge. And I was like, okay, this is pretty easy, I think. Like I already love cooking. And I noticed, started to notice some like um, – performance gains and and how it was affecting my performance and I was kind of like oh like this is like really cool um mm -hmm. like just notice I was sleeping better and recovering faster and um just getting leaner um and I was like this is like so awesome and then you know kind of as I started to learn more about like the environment and, and animal welfare I was like all right this is where I'm supposed to be <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, and then we actually do have a question, a fan question from AJ Murata, I think it's a 20 is how you say it. And they're saying they're stuck for breakfast meals other than eggs. They have multiple mm. cancer and autoimmune, autoimmune, autoimmune disease and an ex-athlete. And if you have any, any thoughts, either of you on that. Trying to eliminate the eggs? Sounds like it. That's how okay. I'm understanding 
I mean, we can do a tofu scramble. We can do protein pancakes. We can do waffles. Um, what else? We can do oatmeal. There are a lot of good dairy-free like. yogurts. Yeah, dairy-free yogurts. Um, Just I, egg. Is that what, that's what yeah, it does sound yeah. like maybe they're looking for other than eggs. Yeah, the replace of the egg replacement uh, okay. is really good. Yeah, oh, or you can use yeah, or you can use potato. tofu if you'd like. Yeah, tofu Perfect. is really cool. Oh, that's those are some uh, great answers. Um, okay, so you'll have to let us know. M- beginning of May is when this show is targeted to come out. We'll yes. keep listeners um, up to date on when this cookbook is. I'll be looking for mine in the mail. I'll send you the, my <laughs> address. <laughs> this because it sounds awesome. And um, is this something though that like have you is more and more people on the pride um, becoming vegetarian or vegan just based on. Um, some of the, your recipes and just cooking and getting excited about the show, the cookbook. Um, I think people are like into trying it now, mm-hmm. now and then. I think, you know, we as um, a team like have meals and stuff, so there's always options as well. But um, I think whenever Ali and I make things, we, um, you know, we'll like bring stuff in for people to try, or, or people will ask for like our TikTok pasta recipe, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we're putting ourselves out there. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Yeah, Tony makes it look so fun and easy. Like, I never thought I would be able to eat vegan until she, like, same. Oh, vegetarian. I didn't realize making the transition actually could be pretty easy and, like, taste so good. And I think it's fun when we bring in, like, desserts especially because when you're going to make that treat, like, why not – why not do it vegan and not harm any animals and not pollute the, the earth? So, <laughs> yeah. Why not? Well, okay. I mean, these are all fair points, right? Like, I mean, very <laughs> fair points. And the reason why I asked that about teammates is because, Allie, you and I were talking off air. I'm like, all I picture is the Orlando Pride hanging out together. I'm like, it does feel like you all are having the most fun mm-hmm. yeah, out of any vegan team. burgers so, and <laughs> Tony's lemon loaf. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, okay, just a couple more questions I want to get to, and then um, we got to hit break. But um, that's not the only thing that's going. Ali, you've got another podcast off the yes. ball oh going my on. Yes. Congratulations. I mean, I don't even know how you have time to train <laughs> with the prize. Um, I let's... don't. I just film <laughs> videos. Perfect. Uh, let's talk about um, off the ball and, and what that means to you and how that project came about. Yeah, that's been great. So Just Women Sports approached me. Obviously, I think there was great response around Kelly's podcast. And now Mm -hmm. there's another podcast um, with Sammy and Lynn. And I think just the more representation, the more visibility we have. And Just Women Sports has been an awesome platform. And the NWSL also like retweeting, reposting. So for me, when I have teammates like Tony and Marta and Ash and Allie and Alex and, and even the younger girls, Marissa, Britt, like... I want people to get to know them and I want them to share their stories. And I think you see us now, the visibility is getting better in terms of being able to see our games, both, you know, domestically and overseas, but especially with COVID that fan engagement and, and getting that little more personal connection hasn't, we haven't been able to have that. So to have this like very mini short series, the episodes are six to seven minutes where I just, we talk about serious things. We talk about their lives. We talk about funny things. And then I do a very random, well, there's thought behind it, but a challenge <laughs> to showcase their skills or lack thereof. So, you know, Tony was, was my second guest and was putting makeup on me <laughs> blindfolded. I think that was, that was one of my, it, it, was so it, it was so good. And she was, was so confident. So good. Was Somebody so confident. hire me. <laughs> when you actually turned around, Allie, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> the thing is, I thought I was doing a really good job. I was like, and okay, like, I'm feeling like her pink. face. This goes here. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, good. this is. It was a nightmare. But yeah, so I think just anything to get my amazing teammates and colleagues out there and for for little girls to get inspired, for fans to get to know us, for hopefully businesses and men out there to realize that we're awesome and they should invest in us. You know, I'm so happy to be a part of it. It's important to me. And again, I'm so glad that a league like the NWSL and a platform like Just Women Sports and Goal 5 is sponsoring it. You know, we do have brands that get it. And hopefully the more shows, the more podcasts, the more media we do and work hard that it will pay off and we'll get even more attention and and the investment we deserve. 
One hundred percent. I couldn't agree more, and, and really, really well said because exactly it snaps across the board. Because it, it is so true, and it's it's amazing to see how it's amplified even more just on field viewership because of everybody being to get getting to know players off yeah, the field, right? And, and how relatable um, yeah. the athletes are in you two. Um, for the most part. So, um, okay. Well, awesome. Thank you. We have to go to break, but these two stay in your seats because they're gonna come back and join me to preview the upcoming games tonight and the two tomorrow. So thank you.
And well, welcome back to NWSL Live. I am here with two very special guests, Ali Riley and Tony Presley from the Orlando Pride team. And now for the lovely conversation, and now we're going to have some more fun and preview the two games tonight and also two games tomorrow. So we got some fun voices for them to feel free to, to chime in and how they feel about each team. And they have a bye this week. Don't play till. Saturday, so we good to get two players' point of view. The first game we have is Racing Louisville is hosting North Carolina Courage coming up in like 28 minutes or so, and North Carolina very much still in the hunt to get into the championship game on the East Division. So, Tony, Ali, what are your predictions? What are we thinking? What do you like about these two teams? Racing Louisville, obviously, their inaugural season, and talk about um, state-of-the-art facilities. Yeah. Um, yeah, Louisville coming in the first season, um, I think they've done really well so far. Um, they have a lot of good quality players and, and look to play some good soccer. I think um, I think I have North Carolina on this one. Uh, just, you know, with how dynamic they are and, and fast pace. Um, I mean, them this goal fest of their last game was pretty wild so um i think it'll be an exciting game this louisville north carolina yeah for sure and go ahead ali yeah i think uh i obviously don't know too much about the teams but from what i've heard like north carolina isn't used to letting in so many goals and isn't loose to used to losing so i would think they're going to be really pumped up to have a comeback win so my money is definitely on them today yeah yeah for sure and i think any any of us know that have been in the league and or been coached by paul riley that their standard is so high that that will be completely unacceptable. And I would imagine it'd be more about the response that North Carolina has coming into this game than yeah. really just setting their sights at all on the, the championship game. So um, definitely we'll look to see them sure up some things defensively as um, letting in four goals is not something that any of us are accustomed to hearing from North Carolina. But as Tony mentioned, so much attacking um, prowess and still very much an exciting team um, to play. And also your next opponent. So let's <laughs> yeah. scout them after we'll, this. We'll be taking notes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> For sure. And then, all right, moving on. The late night game tonight at 8.30 is Kansas City playing um, first time at home. And they are welcoming the Houston Dash. Houston Dash will be the first time that they'll welcome back their international players, I think, much different look in the attack, but Ali, we'll start with you. Thoughts, thoughts on this rivalry or, or this matchup? Gosh, that's a really hard one. Obviously, we had Casey in preseason, but I mean, I love watching A Rod play. I think she's so dynamic. She's so aggressive. Obviously, that goal that she kind of like snuck off. Um, what was that a few days ago? Like that's the kind of pressure that she gives. And then I think. I don't know. With Houston, I know how it is when you it's a first game where you've like changed the lineup around a little bit. So I don't I don't know then like who's gonna be out, who's gonna be in, but I know that Houston did great in the in the tournament uh last year. And gosh, I don't know. I it's I would think it would be kind of even, but maybe Houston has an edge just with some of the individual names that I've seen on that team. Tony, you have anything to add to that? Um, <laughs> yeah, me. I think it, it might be a pretty even matchup as well. But I think I'm going to take KC on this one. I think just uh, being in their their MLS side stadium, that's going to be exciting for them. And then, um, I mean, you mentioned A-Rod. I think she's so dynamic and you always have to worry about her. She's so smart with her runs and can turn um, nothing into something. And I think with the experience of Corsi in the back, I think, you know, she's going to hold it down. <laughs> no, I like that. Look at you too. Okay, listen, we're welcoming you into the broadcast. And we're to <laughs> like, yeah. yes, or Casey, just like chime in, it's like revolutionizing broadcast going forward. But <laughs> you make a good point about A Rod, and I think it kind of goes back to um, our interview pre previously when I was asking Tony about like kind of like not necessarily reinventing ourselves, but I feel like A Rod is a player that keeps finding different ways to. Uh, put teams under pressure as an attacker. Like obviously, she's always been very dynamic in the going vertical, but being able to come back, helping set play, and just constantly being a nuisance. It'll be interesting to see how that goes tonight, for sure. And then Houston, I mean, continuing to 
kind of change the the viewpoint of what that organization looks like in the NWSL and become more of a, a market that wants to the players to go there and, and to be excited about um, playing for Houston. All right. I, I'm like loving to have a year two. On this <laughs> I See you next week. It. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Every, every Monday at 5 p.m. Yeah, you, you want to go every Monday. That's what I signed up for. <laughs> exactly. Rotating analyst. I love it. Oh, and I'll um, send you an invoice. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Actually, not me. I'll, I'll send it to the... <laughs> Um, all right, moving on to tomorrow night's games. Um, the last two before we hit the weekend, it will be Spirit hosting Gotham FC. And the Spirit, obviously out of this tournament now, they're playing in their last game. But still, I think some exciting things with their formation changes throughout. A young team, um, so some real promise, I feel, um, on that side that are still trying to look um, for the continuity and the best relationships. But then Gotham, I mean, goodness, continuing. One, they're called Gotham. So we, it's just a new, it's a rebrand, right? So, and they're rebranding themselves on the field as well. I mean, I don't remember the days when uh, this New Jersey team scored four goals. So exciting, it, really exciting play and, and future for this team. Tony, you have anything, um, your thoughts on them? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Gotham on this one. Um, I think they have it all right now. I think they have a dynamic threat in behind uh, with Purse and, and their front runners. I think they have someone who can control and take amazing shots and really control the game and Carly Lloyd. Um, and then I think they also can keep the ball and possess as well. So I think not only can they look forward and be direct, but I think they can control the game as well. Yeah, I think, well, and D DC is going to be missing Kelly, which um, is a big <laughs> blow, unless they have a that. that. Um, and the one thing that could be going in DC's favor is, like, the pressure is off. They're out, whereas Gotham, I mean, they still will have two games. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think we're, we obviously are hoping that Gotham loses, but that could be, like, it could be more a mental game there. But everything Tony said in terms of what probably is most likely to happen football wise, I think Gotham definitely has the upper hand. Well, and, and you make an interesting point too, because I think, you know, depending on what position teams were in coming into this tournament to begin with, how, how you prep for it, were you going into mm -hmm. win as a team? Were you going in to use it as an extension of preseason to really understand where you are? And as you mentioned, Ali, like having this, the pressure off of Washington now, do they look to tweak a few things? Do they keep Tori Houston in the midfield as we saw against your team or with Kelly out? Does she move to the right back position? Do you continue going with what has worked and that you want to see work in these games and then uh, go from there? So there is, there is some interesting matchup here because you know Gotham is going to be like really going for the win to, to find themselves in a, the best position to get into a championship game for the first yeah. time in franchise history, really. All right. Rounding this one out is Chicago Red Stars hosting or OL Reign hosting the Chicago Red Stars. Where are we at with this one? Ali, I'll go with you. Or Tony. Oh, yeah. Tony. I have no idea. So Tony, <laughs> I, that is, so uh, I don't know anything about those two teams yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony, we'll go with you. Chicago or OL Reign. Hmm. You know what? I think I think Chicago. Um, I don't know why. I'm just gonna say Chicago. The tarot cards. It was the tarot, tarot. card. I read the tarot and it said Chicago. Yes. Okay. Listen, I meant to ask you about the tarot as well because you know I've been again doing some like <laughs> digging deep and I see you over there reading. So listen, if you want if you more time, also... Lori, we could uh, we could do something here, but <laughs> next time. Next time. Uh, listen, I think, you know, that's an interesting pick in the fact that, you know, in the past we've seen Chicago with these players that have played so long together. They have been dangerous. I think it, they've struggled since Sam Kerr and now Nagasato are gone. They haven't been able to really stretch teams. It's made it pretty predictable and pretty one pace for them. And I feel like O.L. Reign, even though, you know, it was a, it seemed like a big loss against Portland – in the Cascadia rivalry last week, they still start to show some promise with having more of their players come back. Jess Fishlock, you see Megan Rupino come in to the mix as well. And 
Sofia Huerta, right? So you having some players I think can be even more impactful, just be really about at this point in time, both of these teams are out because Portland still, um, sealed the deal. But again, maybe pressure's off and we'll see something um, different from both of these sides and a little bit more risk taking than we've seen. So, totally. all right. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you joining me because Jordan and Jeff decided not to show up. And they are. <laughs> and we'll just take their place. <laughs> yeah. So here you are. I'll let them know also that you have taken their place. That thank you. And um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Good luck the rest of your season, and um, we really will look forward to. And once we know more about your show and your cookbook, we'll for sure promote it on this show and obviously on. Um, our own individual social media platforms. So, thank you. All, all the best. And thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, really appreciate everybody and make sure you check out the game 6 PM and 8 30 Eastern tonight. And I believe the same times tomorrow, a little bit of break before we hit the action again next week, featuring Orlando pride versus North Carolina on Saturday. So thank Bye-bye. you. To Dana Rubin, our producer, and everybody behind the scenes, we appreciate you so much. And I'm Lori Lindsay, and we will be signing off. See you next week, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Eastern, Monday, for next episode of NWSL Live. Bye. <laughs>